Hi, this is Doug Winning, creator of this fan-made episode of Welcome to Night Vale. In this episode, I play the voice of Cecil Palmer, host of Night Vale Community Radio. NVCR broadcasts to the fictional desert town of Night Vale, where this show is set in. This episode was written intermittently over the course of several months. Ironically, as new Night Vale episodes were released, the ideas I had already written started to contradict official Night Vale canon. This episode now takes that into consideration. The story takes place somewhere between episodes 17 and 61, and is for the most part spoiler free. Welcome to Night Vale is an internet podcast created by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner, and voiced by Cecil Baldwin. You can find all the show's episodes on their YouTube channel, Welcome to Night Vale, and on many more platforms. Go to welcometonightvale.com to do that thing. And hey, thanks. Earth is vast. Experiences are complicated. Ask your doctor if sensory input is right for you. Welcome to Night Vale. Night Vale Community Radio have received numerous letters in the mail from faithful listeners ever since our mailbox was resuscitated by Night Vale post office workers. Recently after the abrupt reopening of the Night Vale post office, which had previously been inactive for several months, an invasion or an infestation of postal workers arrived without warning and delivered countless packages and envelopes to our station. They overwhelmed us with their infinite mail portals profusely spewing cardboard boxes and manila folders into our offices and the kitchen and even inside station management's office. We all had to evacuate the building through the small emergency exits that only open once you explain to them what the emergency is, which was pretty hard to do over the deafening low hum and rustling papers. Outside, we witnessed thundering dark blue clouds emanating from above as the postal workers hovered into the sky and disappeared. After it seemed safe to enter, we discovered that every parcel we received was actually addressed to someone named Erica, spelled with a K. Unfortunately for us, and by us I mean the interns, these incorrect shipments had to be made correct by collecting each and every one of them and bringing them to Old Woman Josie's house, where they could be brought to the angels who are all named Erica. When we returned to the station afterwards, we discovered that by some miracle, our mailbox contained new letters addressed to the station after such a long period of dormancy. I guess all the coincident supernatural energy brought the mailbox back to health. And well, we've gotten all these letters since. You know, symbols which hold meaning in writing? Yeah that kind of letters. Now that I think of it, just this morning I received a parcel containing the single Greek letter Gamma. This considerate gesture of appreciation for the work we do at Night Vale Community Radio to bring all important news, traffic, political opinions, and corrections to political opinions to our friendly desert community has truly made my day. Out of all the letters we've received, this is the first Greek letter in quite some time. Meanwhile, we have also received actual written messages at the station, which we are also very appreciative of, especially due to the high penalty for using writing utensils. However, 
We ask that whomever is repeatedly sending pro-mountain propaganda would discontinue doing so, or else we will report you to city council for indefinite detention. Hey, kids! It's time for a new Children's Fun Fact Science Corner! Today, I'd like to talk about simple machines. Do you know what a simple machine is? Of course you do! This is just a quick refresher to reinforce your mandatory knowledge of simple machines and other engineering topics for the new early learning program issued by City Council. There are many simple machines, such as the lever, the wheel and axle, the inclined plane, the declined plane, the dissatisfied plane, the PNC Bank officially registered trademark investment plane, and the airplane, just to name a few. I bet there are many more you encounter every day. Be sure to remember them always for when you're drafted into City Council's new Youth Development and Planning Board. This has been another Children's Fun Fact Science Corner. And now, a message from our sponsor. Tired of your home? Sick of boredom and inactivity? Come to the hole in the vacant lot out back of the Ralphs and join our new lacrosse team. Not only do we huddle, but we play lacrosse now, in the hole, every day. But not Wednesdays. Wednesday is no good for us. Who are we? Why do we want you to come? Why did we spend money for this airtime? We understand you are confused, but whole, vacant lot, Ralph's, lacrosse, us, for the low, low price. Join today and receive free team jerseys and branded equipment for our matches in the whole. Anyway, we're almost out of airtime. So just come to the hole in the vacant lot out back of the Ralphs and play lacrosse while huddling with us. Or else. Let's return now to our regularly scheduled programming. An update about our mailbox. During the sponsored message, we actually received a phone call from a worker at the Nightvale Post Office. They told our newest intern George, who then told me just moments ago that our mailbox is in unstable medical condition, and that we may not be able to receive any more letters without an extensive recovery and rehabilitation of the mailbox. Apparently, being inactive for several months leads to such handicaps as mental incapacitation, slower reaction time, and muscular atrophy, which has led to letters being delivered later than they were supposed to have arrived. Intern George then proceeded to bring the mailbox to Nightvale General Hospital, where the doctors immediately took it in upon seeing its critical condition. I feel really bad for our mailbox with all the stress we put it under. I hope it gets better soon, and I look forward to receiving many letters in the future. But in the meantime, please hand deliver important parcels to the front desk of our station. I wish Carlos was here. <sighs> he is a scientist after all. But in the meantime, here's a look at this week's community calendar. Monday is Bring Your Work to Kid Day. Work from home and involve your favorite child in one of your routine job activities. If you lack a child, come to the Nightvale chapter of the Boy Scouts of America and choose any boy under the Blood Pact Scout rank and bring them to your home where you can brainwash them into believing they're your biological child. 
be informed that all ranks above Blood Pact Scout are invulnerable to mental manipulation. On Tuesday, the Night Vale Spiderwolves will be playing baseball against old forgotten shadows of themselves in a profoundly confusing and nostalgic quandary that neither side will win. Wednesday is Sunday! All events on Wednesday and Sunday have been reconciled and will occur twice in your memory with a three-day gap in between the repeating days. Thursday consists of an infinite series of points in time and space that represent the tedium of everyday life. Many things will happen, many things will not, but none of them will be remembered after our points in time and space have run out and everything is null. On Friday, Forbidden information. This content has been redacted by the Sheriff of Night Vale. And finally, Saturday is opposite day. Instead of doing something, do the opposite and do absolutely nothing. Do absolutely nothing and stay in your home. Do not exit your home. Do absolutely nothing. Do not use your eyes to see or ears to hear or nose to smell anything that is happening outside of your home. Don't even bother looking outside. There isn't anything even going on out there anyway. Just do absolutely nothing. This has been this week's Community Calendar. And now, traffic. A new traffic study conducted by the Nightvale Department of Public Safety to monitor the patterns of drivers in and out of Route 800 has shown a substantial amount of evidence that blue cars that use Exit 24 are more likely to be eaten by dinosaurs than cars of other colors that use Exit 24. The study found that the reason for this is that blue cars contain more vital nutrients for dinosaurs than other cars, and that dinosaurs really want to stay on a healthy diet. Earlier today, Night Vale citizens started protesting outside the Night Vale Department of Public Safety office building with demands that the dinosaurs be removed from Exit 24 and put in a proper home where they can be fed blue cars whenever is needed. But a representative from the NVDPS stated that blue cars are hard to find and being a blue car predator is hard nowadays and we shouldn't punish these innocent animals for struggling to survive. And then proceeded to make a very off-putting gesture and mumble passive-aggressive remarks like only wanted to help these dinos but... and yeah, sure, like you know how to run public safety. Afterwards, all of the protesters were disbanded by force. If you own a blue car, be sure to use detours to avoid using Exit 24, or else it may spell your untimely demise. This has been Traffic. An important statement from City Council has just been issued. A reminder to all citizens of Night Vale, all writing utensils are and continue to be banned. Do not write any messages to yourselves or to others. Do not send these messages to yourselves or to others. Writing utensils are banned from public use. Using writing utensils is a federal offense. Remove all writing utensils from your home. Repeat, remove all writing utensils from your home. If you do not have a home to remove writing utensils from, pretend to have one by sitting on an imaginary sofa with your imaginary house pet and then proceed to remove the writing utensils from that area. Repeat this procedure until every writing utensil has been removed from your home. You heard him, folks. Remove all writing utensils. 
As an advocate and spokesperson for our community, I wholeheartedly agree with this ban. Writing utensils are dangerous and can be used to write hurtful things. Who knows what could happen if your opinions could be expressed through writing? As I have said before, whomever has been writing and sending pro-mountain propaganda to our station, you must stop. It is harmful to yourself and to your community. You know, if I had to take a guess at who this culprit is, I would say with utmost confidence that it is Steve Carlsberg. He always creates a fuss over his opinions, saying things like, Well, of course the Earth revolves around the Sun, or There are only three spatial dimensions, and I'm sick of hearing his nonsense. I have to say that there is an undoubtedly likely connection between these absurd messages and his detestable conclusions. Not to mention his unacceptably dry scones he brings to PTA meetings. <sighs> Steve Carlsberg. At this time, Night Vale Community Radio offers the following corrections to past errors. Previously, I mentioned during a broadcast that I was feeling fine, and everything was going pretty smoothly, when in fact, I was not. It was a lie, and I wasn't even aware I had said anything when intern Lily brought me coffee and asked me if I was feeling alright. I don't remember that interaction now, but later they told me I didn't look too good. I sat there in my seat, brooding for hours, with little physical awareness other than that of my solitary mind in the abyss of unreality. Wordless ideas and feelings burned in my psyche outside of space-time in a discomforting shock of profound disturbance. Why do I exist? Why does existence exist in the exact way it does? And why does a small part of existence called Cecil have the consciousness and cognition that lets him experience such a specifically aligned amalgamation of the rest of it? Do I even have consciousness? Why do I think the thoughts that I think? What is anything? Paralyzed in my own mind, coffee and speech were the least of my troubles. Do you ever feel totally alone in the universe? Do you unexpectedly get a draining numbness and you have to sit down to avoid falling over and you get taken aback mentally and metaphysically? Does the fact that you are always sensing input from all around you feel so overwhelming that it scares you? Scares you to the point where it's painful? Scares you to the point where you audibly yell aloud? Scares you to the point where you doubt you'll have any future at all in this perpetual continuum of all current timeless manifestations of things happening? Where are you, Cecil? Where are you, Cecil? Where are you, Cecil? 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 Where are you, Cecil? Where are you, Cecil? 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 Where are you? Where are you, Cecil? <sighs> this has been Corrections. Listeners, I have some important news. A, a lot of commotion is happening outside, but I can't tell what it is. I'm looking out the window, 
it looks like storm clouds are encroaching on our station. But those clouds are dark blue. And if I know anything, I know that this means another emergency delivery is engaging. Now, I know we should all get to safety for this dangerous onslaught, but it would be very unprofessional to stop broadcasting in the middle of our show. Listeners, I am going to stay here at the station to face these invaders. You need not worry about me. I'll be fine. All I have to do is make a fortress out of furniture and... Oh, this sturdy pile of witchcraft tomes and spellbooks will do just the trick. I'll just reach my hand out from inside my bunker and grab one of the nearly endless copies of the message being delivered. I'll be back in just a moment after I barricade myself inside heavy objects. Oh no. I can hear it coming. Hopefully, everyone else will have evacuated the area by now. I've constructed a small window to see outside, and I can see the legion of postal workers closer now than ever before. It's very dark outside. Um, listeners, I think, I think I see a figure outside, other than the postal workers. And not to be confused with the hooded figures inside the dog park. Obviously. But... They're just standing there. What are they doing? Who is that? They appear human. Who would be out there now? I must go see who it is. gosh. George. It's intern George. He's, he's, he's just standing there. What is he doing? Why would anyone... George, get out of here. Run. Listeners, it appears that intern George is standing paralyzed in front of the maelstrom. I don't know what to do. Is he hurt? Is he being possessed by some malevolent spirit? Surely I cannot go out there. Anyone still nearby would certainly meet a terrible fate. No one can save him. I can't save him. George, if you are listening to this, you must run. The postal workers are here and it isn't safe. <gasps> he, he turned around. I think he sees me. George, run! George, what? What? George? He, George, just made a thumbs up gesture, and then turned back around. No, what are you doing? George, come back! <gasps> they are here. The postal workers are in the studio right now. Infinite amounts of papers and envelopes are being shot out of the portal and wrecking up the studio. I must grab one. Ow! My hand is all cut up from the papers. But I am holding a black envelope with a blue wax seal that reads NVPO. Let's open it. There's a letter inside. It reads, To Nightvale Community Radio. We regret to inform you that your mailbox has passed away. An emergency delivery of this message means that there was no mailbox to deliver the message to directly, and so in accordance with standard post office protocol, it has been ensured that you definitely will receive this message by way of infinity fill. Oh yeah, you know, infinity fill. 
standard stuff. Sometimes it's hard to get a letter these days. Anyway, it continues. Also in accordance with standard post office protocol, everything you once knew about your mailbox, boxes, cubes in general, and really any non-essential three-dimensional shape will be deleted from your memory. Sorry, those are the rules. Our rules. Definitely our rules. Yup. Not at all the result of some debt we owe to an interdimensional spellcaster. No way. Your mind will no longer recall any thought pertaining to dying mailboxes or outmoded geometry. Subsequently, a new mailbox will arrive someday. We don't really know how or when these bewildering creatures are birthed, so just sort of wait until that eventually happens. With respect, Nightvale Post Office. This is terrible news. What a terrible day of troubling loss. I don't even know what to say. What do I ever say? Nothing. Speechlessly, silently, incomprehensibly, let me take you now to the weather.
Well, listeners, we have returned. Returned to the show. Returned to my voice. But what have we not returned to? Our old moments are gone and constantly being lost to new ones. The past has departed, and things will never be the same again. Although I can't remember why, my hand has cuts all over it. They seem like new cuts, and they haven't healed. Why are they there? And why is the studio a total mess? Piles of broken furniture and torn papers lie all about the room. How can I not remember what happened? The only thing I remember is darkness. Oh. To the family of intern George. He was a pretty average and sufficient worker. He seemed to be really devoted to something. I don't know. He will be missed appropriately and for an acceptable amount of time. I don't know why I hadn't done that earlier. On the other hand, we still have the future. Indeterminate, unknowable future. The past will always be lost to the future, and the future is full of new moments. Granted, all moments will be forgotten. We should take time to mark our past while it is still the present, so we can learn from it. Except with writing utensils. Those are still super illegal. I absolutely did not recommend using those. So what is it that we actually have? We have the present. The show. My voice. Night Vale. We have stories. We have ourselves. We have others. The present is our comfortable chaos at the border of the relentless future and the grieving past. The grieving future and the relentless past. The present is now, and we have each other. We have John Peters, you know, the farmer. We have Larry Leroy, out on the edge of town, and his kitten, Larry Leroy. We have friendly local athlete Sadie Sherman, first place Olympic medalist in dream skating and abstract archery. Oh, and we have that guy in the desert who's always digging in the sand only to have more sand fill in the hole until he is too exhausted to continue and tries again the next day. <laughs> I love that guy. What a futile and hilarious hobby. We have Sarah Sultan, president of Nightvale Community College, who is literally a smooth, fist-sized river rock. We have Marcy Benson, Night Vale veterinarian who totally doesn't have two skeletons inside her body. And of course, we have you. You, the unwavering listener. You are still here. Be glad that you are in such great company. And hey, maybe you will remember what happened better than I can. Stay tuned next for changes, changes, oh god, so much is happening and I can't take it anymore. An artistic audio showcase of the sounds of emotional turmoil and loud industrial machinery. And for now, good night, Night Vale. Good night. Welcome to Night Vale's production of Commonplace Books. This fan-made episode was written, produced, and voiced by Doug Winning. Original music by Disparition. All of it can be found at disparition.info or disparition.bandcamp.com. This episode's weather was Dot by Calico Galaxy. Find out more at calicogalaxy.bandcamp.com. Check out welcometonightvale.com for more information on the show, as well as all sorts of cool Night Vale stuff you can own. Today's proverb. Misery loves company. You should really go see him. He's gotten quite lonely. <laughs>